the ones that were successful loved what they did so they could persevere when, you know, when it got really tough. And, and the ones that, that didn't love it quit. That's why I used to live at right here. 403 East Chestnut. Right here. That's where I grew up. This is where everybody was, though. I mean, this right here was, this alley was cleared out. They used to call it Crack Alley. You know, and everybody used to you know, have races right here in the alley. You know, people, it was, people used to be beefing you know, one side. One apartment was beefing with the next apartment. It was wild. I put my heart and soul in this game. I'm feeling drained, unappreciated, unalleviated. Tired of coming up short, off abbreviated. Want my whole name spelt out, my old pain spilt out. No pain, no gain. I blow brains, cocaine, throw flames, lucane. The coach ain't help out, so I call my own shots. I'm David Blaine, I'm breaking out of my own box. You stay the same, but homie, if you change, may you change for the better. Back when Martin King had a thing for Coretta. One day she seen all the dreams he was dreaming. Did she have a clue of all the schemes he was scheming? Still loved him just enough to put up with the cheating. Must go by and only see him for a weekend. Uh, I say a prayer and hope my girl ain't even. We all got. Justin came in the world September the 5th, 1985. I was 13 years old. My mother uh, raised him till he got two years old. I had him. He was a great kid. He wasn't no bad kid. And I took care of him after that. Right here. Plan on it. We used to have this. This thing used to be in the middle. One of these. It used to be just these two right here. That one wasn't here. So we used to have a crate to be right here. We used to have a crate up. We used to be little. I can just now. I can just now think about how little we used to be. Look, I'm, I'm tall now. We used to be. I couldn't even dunk on this. We was that little. And Maurice and them used to live right here. So we was right across from each other. So it was like you know family bonding. And once we got, we wore this out right here. All this used to be grass, we wore all this out. It used to be just mud. So in the rain time, we couldn't play. So then we moved it from there, and we moved it right here. We used to put it, so they didn't like me dunk. I used to dunk and hang on it. So when we, um, when I used to dunk and hang on and break it down, they used to raise it higher and higher so I wouldn't get up there. First time I met Justin was probably in sixth grade. He was playing at a local junior high school, Lincoln Junior High here in Carbondale. He was playing basketball, probably one of the smaller kids in that particular program. Most of the kids were either bigger or taller. Um, so he really wasn't thought of as a very good basketball player at that time. And then we got involved with Daxon County Housing and developed a summer program with the academic and athletic component. It was when I first initially started working with Justin Dentman. And then a year later, we started Titans Basketball Academy when he and several other local kids from Carbondale got together and we started our AAU program that once again also had an academic component throughout the summer. I remember when I was little, there was a dice green going on. I was in the house and we heard it got robbed. So I tried to run home. I ran right past the guy who was shooting in the air. That was a scary moment and ran the house. Cussed my mom and them out because they left me outside. <laughs> Justin came to practice one day and was refusing to read his paper. After several requests, I told him, if you don't read the article that you've written, you can't stay on the team. So Justin left, very upset, with me and the coaching staff. I got a call later from his mother, Stephanie, and she relayed to me, Coach, Justin struggles with reading, and he was embarrassed in front of the other kids. And so I talked with Stephanie and Justin, but I also told Justin he couldn't come back to the team without reading his paper. So I stood there and read the paper with Justin so that he would understand Basketball is what you do, it's not who you are. And without the ability to educate yourself, you won't go far. You know, yeah, they still look the same, it's just they threw some brick into a fence right here. Yeah, the fences didn't used to be here. It used to be just a, a sidewalk right here. They go straight through here and split. It used to be matches in the middle, and we used to do flips all in the middle. Yeah, this is where it started. This is where my basketball dream started, right here, on the crates, right here. He cried a lot, you know, because he always wanted to be with me, but my mama had him too, up too. And he got, he was four. He used to call me Stephanie, but when he got with me, he called me mama. And I raised him for man. He was a good kid in school. I never had no problems with him or nothing like that. And um, he always loved basketball, loved it. He loved it. You was like a junior high school though, bro. Sophomore high school, walk around the house, playing with the G. No, I'm talking about, no, I'm talking about, but when he, when he, but when he got older though, when he, when he got older as his high school, he still walked. 
Right after practice, right in there. Hey, you said it in one spot too. If it was moving, hey, mama, they ain't touched my GI Joes. <laughs> I believe he was the first freshman in maybe 12 to 15 years to, to start varsity at Carbondale High School his freshman year. Um, played very well his sophomore year as well. And we set out going into his junior year and set up some goals. One of his goals was to be first team all state. Wanted to go to state, of course, with his senior class. And then wanted to get a basketball scholarship. And so we sat down and came up with a plan, an academic plan, as well as a basketball plan. That's when the maturation for Justin started to begin. The time is now. now, now. On everything. Took my heart away from money. I ain't interested in fame. And I pray that never change. Ambition is priceless. It's something that's in your veins. And I put that on my name. Uh. Only hope I had was selling. Was on my grind cause times was harder than the sell of flow. My mama told me never steal and never tell them folks. I grew up looking up the that was selling. Oh, I was raised by the stop sign. No religion, I was getting saved by the nah. By the minute I was getting paid like the hotline. Serving rolling, things was calling. We was that kind, well connected, well respected, and well protected, and get accepted. Was rejected, now they regret it, and get my message. Was a signal when I was texting. The I was calling was fraud, and I learned my lesson. Now I move with aggression, use my mind as a weapon, cause chances are never given. They took them like interceptions. So throw that pass, I be the cornerback. Me and Pilar and MMG gon' bring that one of them. Right here, ambition. His work ethic was incredible on the court. It was getting him to understand the value of character, doing the right thing all the time, um, going to class, being a good student, being accountable for your actions and the actions of others when you're in charge. And that um, didn't come easily to Justin because his main focus was basketball. By the time his senior year came around, we thought that he got it, did a lot of the things we were asking of him, and became a complete player. Everybody used to come down here. We, this is where me and my cousin Travion Cole used to have battles at. Right here, this is where me and him was cousins off the court, enemies on the court. See, they didn't mess the court up, but yeah, this is, these double rams. You couldn't shoot on double rams out here, then you might as well say you might get off the court. They just had, they just had better, uh, they had nets and people used to tear them down, so they put chains up. Now ain't nobody tearing them down now. But yeah, this is where it was all began, right here, on this court. You wasn't on, if you wasn't on, if you was on that court, you were, it was, yeah, we played on that court sometimes, but mainly it was this court. This is where it went down at, A and the B court. Wind up being first team all state, and Carbondale did go to state that year. I believe they finished third or fourth in the state his senior year, him and several of his other classmates. And then he had to make a very difficult choice, and that was whether to attend Illinois State and sit out as a Prop 48 student or to go to Wichita Prep out in Massachusetts. When he graduated, he, he, he wanted to go to college, but he couldn't because his grades weren't right. So he, they decided, he decided to go to prep school up in uh, Boston. And he really didn't want to go, but they told him he had to go there. And he was upset, crying, calling me every night. And after talking with he and Stephanie, we decided that Justin probably needed to go out to Wichita and get one more year of academic stability and social emotional development under his belt. He was finna leave Boston, but I told him, don't leave Boston. It was hard. It was hard for him, but he, he did it. He did it. So reluctantly, he went, had a great season out there as well, wind up signing with the University of Washington and Coach, Coach Romar. Ooh. And pulling the up. Yeah, I was like, you <laughs> I got loud too, cause dude, he gonna say thanks, young fella, for waking me up. I said, was you sleep? <laughs> was you sleep? Cause he was killing. Doo -doo -doo -doo. You got win this game? Uh, we did not win that game. <laughs> <laughs> we did not win that game. What's the name? We're crazy. Ooh, uh, yeah. To be from a small town, inner inner city neighborhood, to being a big fish in a very very big pond with a lot of media attention, a lot of expectations, and a lot of the things that Justin probably struggled with as a young adolescent. And um, so we just talked about what he needed to do, 
one of our biggest issues was his braids. Coach Romar didn't allow braids. And so Justin was thinking about possibly not attending the University of Washington. He said, Coach, I would like to keep my braids. And my comment to him was, what do you want to do? You want to keep the braids or you want to have an opportunity to educate yourself and see the world? So eventually, like I said, if I get a year contract, I do episode, I do a season oh, call. MVP? I made it, huh? Was MVP? Yeah. For the league? Yeah, D League, yeah. yeah. I and I won a championship. Can you get the whole ball player going? Yeah, that was the same. Y'all won a championship? <laughs> and once he cut the braids off, I think we all were a lot more at ease that he would be successful because he was able to differentiate between what he wanted to do and what he needed to do. And what he needed to do was go there and cut the braids off. And um, Coach Romar was very pleased with Justin's summer workouts. And he worked out really hard. And the most important thing was he showed good character. For the majority of the time, he was at Washington. Coach Romar one day called me and said, I got a story for you about Justin. We looked for him for hours and could not find him. We'd already had practice. He wasn't in the dorms. And they finally looked in the local rec center. And Justin was in there working out, playing basketball with some of the other students from Wash U. And that's when Coach Romar said, you know what? Coach, I think we got a pretty good player. And that was when we all felt comfortable that he would do well under the guidance of Coach Romar at Washington. Go, man. Happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> you don't go back to the TJ Mack and get you another shirt. <laughs> The, the just for me section. <laughs> the logo say just mine. <laughs> just mine. <laughs> Watch your, your, your so-called dude who's not the best in the family. Okay? I'm the best. You can do this. Okay, man. Okay, I'm gonna miss this one right here. Okay, I missed that one. Now the other ones, they're gonna be all swap, 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 swap. You got it honest. Huh? You got it honest. What the f thing, huh? What is, I got it honest. Bands and make her dance. 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 All these cheeks popping, popping. I'm just popping bang. Bands and make her dance. Bands and make her dance. These cheeks clapping and they ain't using hands. Bands and make her dance. Bands and make her dance. All these cheeks popping, popping, I'm just popping bang. Bands are make her dance. Bands are make her dance. These cheeks clap, let's get it. And they ain't using hands. Short her like me alone. Loose one, she don't need alone. She start twerking when she hear a song. Strip up all her income. We get tripping and then some. So nasty when she rolling. She put that air up in my hands. I remote control it. She give me down when the roof gone. At the KOD, she leave with me. She got friends. Bring three. I got drunk. I got drank. Bend it over. Juicy J gon' poop. Get like wet paint. You say no to ratchet, ratchet. Juicy J can't, 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 can't. Racks everywhere, they showing racks, I'm throwing racks. In the VIP, rubber on, I'm stretching that. Bitch, who's tipping? Broke, who's looking? And it ain't a strip club if they ain't showing, showing, showing. Bands that make her dance. Bands that make her dance. All these cheeks popping, popping, I'm just popping bang. Bands that make her dance. Bands that make her dance. These cheeks clapping, and they ain't using hands. Bands are make her dance. Bands are make her dance. All these cheeks popping, popping. I'm just popping bang. Bands are make her dance. Bands are make her dance. These cheeks clapping and they ain't using hands. Uh, pop that, pop that. For real, nigga. Pull out my black card. That's my little nigga. Make a movie with your. JD at the birthday bash. Throwing a shout out to the Ice Box and my man Steve Shaw. And it's promotes and people. We just trying to we just trying to celebrate a nice little birthday. My man Alex, throw it in there. My oh, man E, where he at? Come here, E. Oh, e up right. here. Yo, you already know we right here. Bruce right here. Dre in here. Dre in here. Dre in here. Shine in here. Shine in here. Shine in here. Brittany in here. You know, we just um just trying to celebrate a birthday. You only get one, you get one every year. There ain't nothing but bullet holes and bullet holes in there, but... And we're we, gonna we, turn up. 
Yeah, so we just got. We just got to do what we got to do. Hey, we got to represent. Niggas. You already know. We young and we been kicking it. Nigga. You already know. How you already know. Carbondale, Illinois. You don't realize there's a hole until you get out. These people are just stuck in a uh, crazy world. They think Carbondale is, is all they got. I told people once you get out of Carbondale. You'll see a whole different world. A whole different world. Until then, until then, they will never know. <laughs>